What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use images for buttons with Kivi and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look at using images on buttons. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at using images on buttons. So we can see here, we click this, boom, the button kind of changed a little, text changed piece of cake. So I've got two files here, button underscore image dot pi and button underscore image dot kv are basic kv starter code that we always have. I'm using the sublime text editor then get bash terminal as always. And you can find the code for this in the pinned comment section below as well as the playlist for all the other kv videos in this series. Okay, so let's head over to our kv file and you can see I've got our regular box layout that we always have. The only difference is this time I gave it a little bit of padding and spacing so we can separate our two things. We're gonna have a label and a button. So let's rough this out real quick. Let's go label and we want the text to be whatever. Let's just say hello world. Woo. <laughs> let's give this a font underscore size of like 32. And while we're at it, let's give this an ID because we're going to need to access this thing and reference it later on. And I'm just going to call it my underscore label. So, all right, that looks good. Now let's create a button and same thing. Let's give this a text of, I don't know, let's just say hello. Let's give it a font underscore size of 32. And that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. And so we've got Python button underscore image dot pi. Run this guy. And you see we've got our label here and a button here. There's some padding and spacing around them. And I'll show you why that's important later on. We don't really have to do that. Just make it easier to see our little image thing that we're going to create. So that's why I did that. So, okay, looking good. So close this. Now let me pull up a file explorer. And inside of our Kivi new directory, which is you notice the directory we have all of our files in usually. We've got this other directory called images. And you'll know if you've been watching this playlist every once in a while, I throw some images in this directory to use in a video. And I've done that today. So we've got two files here, login.png and login underscore press.png. And they're the same image, but one of them has dark text and the other one has light text. And the reason that is, is because when we press a button, we want to see that button move a little bit. That's just normal button behavior. And so to make that look like that, in this instance, I've created two images and I changed the text color. And that will make it look like it's moving a little bit just by changing the color. You could also just create a second image here where the button looked depressed, you know, pushed in a little bit. So you could do it that way too. I just chose to do it that way with the text just for no particular reason. Either way you want to do it, the concept of using these buttons uh, using these images as buttons will remain the same. So, okay, we're gonna use these two guys. How do we do it? Well, let's head back over to our code and in our button here, just inside the button, we could just call an image like we always do, right? And to do that, we always just call source and then just point to wherever the image is sitting on your computer. So this is in our images directory and it's called login.png. Now notice this is a relative path. That's because this file is in the same directory that Kivi, you see up here, Kivi new, that our images directory is in. So we can use relative paths. If it wasn't, you could designate it by just calling you know, C forward slash uh, wherever slash images. Or in our case, it would be, you know, Kivi new forward slash images forward slash whatever. But since these are all in the same place, we can use relative paths. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see what this looks like. This is going to be kind of weird. This is not what we want, but it's the beginning of what we want. And you can see here's our image down here. It's kind of connected to our button in the corner, uh, but this is definitely not what we want. So the first thing we want to do is move this image into the middle of the button. And we could do that by setting the center underscore X and the center Y. And to do that, we call self dot parent dot center underscore X. And I'm just going to copy this whole thing and do the same thing for Y. We'll just change this to Y. Okay, go ahead and save this and run it. And this will look a little bit better. Still not exactly what we want, but we're getting there. At least now our image is right in the middle of our button. All right, so, okay, that's cool. So what else can we do now? Well, first, before we get rid of the button completely, let's resize it. So it's at least roughly the size of our image, right? So we do that up here in the button itself by giving it a size underscore hint. And we've looked at size hint in other videos. 
And I played around with this earlier. I came up with 0.15 by 0.12, just trial and error, putting in numbers to make it roughly the size of the image. And now this is gonna be a little bigger than the image, but close enough. So uh, you could get really into it and make it the exact size of the image if you wanted, but I figured this was close enough. And you can see, okay, it's looking better, but we can still see the button around here, which is really not what we want. And also this is way down in the corner. So first let's change the button fact that we can see it. And there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, but probably the easiest way to do it is just to set the background color to the color of our background, which is zero, 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 zero. This will make it black and therefore invisible, and that'll do the trick. So now we can see our image is down here and the button itself seems to be gone. It's still there, we just can't see it, right? Now, if we click this, nothing happens and that's not that great. We'll fix that in a second. Uh, but for now, let's also move this over and we can do that in the normal way as well, just by grabbing our button here. And let's just call position underscore hint. And this is a Python dictionary looking thing. And we can call center underscore X. And let's give this a center of 0 0.5. And that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save that. Run it. Make sure that looks good. Okay, so our image is right here in the middle. Looking great. So now when we click this, nothing happens. It doesn't change or anything. So Let's first make it to where when we click this, the text changes. And we've done this lots of times in other videos, so this shouldn't be very difficult. We just come up to our button and give it an on underscore press. And let's call root dot, let's call this hello underscore on. And this will be a little function. You can call this anything you want, but our button text said hello, or at least it used to. In fact, let's get rid of that. We really don't need that anymore because there's no text gonna be on there. So I'll just comment that out. But uh, we'll call this hello on. So now let's head back over to our button image.py file. And inside our main my layout class here, let's define that function. And we want to pass in self. Now remember, up here, we gave our label an ID of my underscore label. And we know from past videos, we can now change the text by calling self.ids, IDs, reference that ID. It's my label. We want to change the text. And we can set this to anything. Let's just say you pressed the button, All right? Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Make sure that looks good. So it says, hello world. We click it, boom, it changes. So we know the button works, but it's still not very satisfying because when we press it, the, nothing changes in the button itself. It doesn't look like it's been being pressed. And that's kind of a problem because we expect buttons to kind of move when we press them, right? So how can we fix that? Well, let's head back over to our code head over to our Kibi file. Now we give this an on press, we can also give it an on release, right? And so for that, let's call root dot, I don't know, let's just call it hello underscore off. Since we called this one on, we're pressing it on, we're releasing it off, right? And also let's give our image an ID because we're gonna need to change this. So let's give this an, an ID of my underscore image call it anything you want, but we call this one my label, so I'll call this one my image, kind of makes sense. So now we need to create this hello off function, and we do that just in the same way we created our hello on function. Give us some space here, define hello off, and we need to pass in self. Now, what do we wanna do here? Well, actually what we really wanna do is when we press on, we want that button image to change. So up here in our hello on, let's change the self.ids.my underscore image dot source to something else. So why image source? Because remember our image has a source and that's where the image itself is pointing to, right? So if we copy this and paste this in here, now we don't want login, we want login underscore pressed, right? So now when we, Let's just save this and run it. Well, let's give this a pass quickly so it doesn't throw an error. Now, if we run this, this isn't our final result, but you can see when I press down, it changes. Now, when I release, nothing happens. So we need to fix that. But at least now when we press, it changes to that darker thing, right? So when we release, we want the old one to pop back up, the, the original one. So I can just copy this whole thing here. And then down here in our hello off function, which means we're releasing, right? We just wanna change this back to login. So when we press it, we show the login pressed image. When we release it, we show the regular original login one. 
with the white text. So, okay, that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this guy and run it one more time. And now I'm just gonna press and hold and you can see, boom, it changes. Now I'm gonna release, boom, it works. So if I do it quickly, that's kind of cool. Now, one thing you'll note, let's run this guy again, which is maybe weird, maybe not. When I press this, the text changes. When I release it, nothing happens. Maybe that's fine, maybe that's what you want. In fact, if we do it again in sort of real time, I'll just click and release really quickly, boom, boom. You can't really tell, but maybe to your eye, you can tell. So I don't know, maybe I would, maybe I wouldn't. Instead of doing this on the press, I would maybe put this on the release. So when we release the button, then the text changes. It's a little thing and it probably doesn't matter at all. But if you're neurotic like me, you might wanna do that. So now when I press and hold, nothing changes except for the button changes. When I release, boom, then the text changes. You know, it's kind of a, a silly thing, maybe a moot thing, maybe you can't even tell the difference, but I don't know, I might do it like that. Here, I'll do it in real time, boom, boom. So you can't really tell between the two, but whatever, that's how you would do that if you wanted to. So that's really all there is to it. You can use any image you want for your button, obviously. You can make it to where the text changes color when you press it, like I am, so it looks at least like something's happening. Or you can maybe have the entire button itself, like I said, have be a depressed, like shifted a little bit to make it look like it's being pressed. And then when you release, it'll go back to the normal and you can do that. I just did it with the text because frankly, it was a little easier in Photoshop, uh, but whatever you want to do, that's how you could do it very quickly and very easily. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. There are over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.